internet parenting hacks that sound like they don't work, but actually do. Number one, if you're in the store and your kid's super excited, they want that thing that's toy, it's candy, whatever it is, chocolate, they want it so badly, they are begging for it. Instead of just going no right away and realizing you're potentially walking into a temper tantrum or a meltdown, you can get excited with them. Take out your phone and be like, wow, that does look delicious. Here, take a picture of it on my phone. That way I'll remember it and we can put it on either your birthday list, your Christmas list, whatever is coming up the most closely. Kids usually forget within an hour or so that they even asked, but they get so excited and they're so happy that you also thought it was a cool idea to get that thing. And so even though they're not getting the thing, they aren't feeling like you're turning them down necessarily. They're learning to control and wait and have patience in order to get the thing later. When relatives ask you what your kid wants for Christmas, you literally have maybe an entire album on your phone of things that your kid has specifically asked for. My kids, do they get everything they ask for for Christmas and birthdays? No, they'll get like one or two gifts for their birthday and then like a handful of things for Christmas. But just the fact that I validated what they wanted goes so far in avoiding meltdowns. Number two, I actually learned on TikTok. I saw several creators talking about it. Did not think it would work for my child. It is the one finger rule. Your kid, you're going into a store. For some reason, you have to be in there. You need to get what you need to get and get out. They are touching things. You're like, come on, please stop touching, stop touching. They are still touching. So instead, telling them, if you're able to, if it's appropriate for the situation, instead to touch with one finger or just two fingers. Oh, just touch gently with one finger. Then they still get out that like desire, that sensorial need to like touch something. You don't have to keep getting after them. Like stop touching, stop touching. You're not driving yourself nuts. Cause let's be honest, are you really getting everything you need in the store when you're sitting there having to uh, like chase your kid the whole time? No, you're not. And then they're not breaking things cause they're only touching it with one finger. When it comes to swear words, in all the preschools I worked at, they used to tell the kids those are grown-up words instead of saying they're bad words or they're naughty words because these children have probably heard most of those words from the adults in their lives, <laughs> certain adults, and it's not our place as educators to tell them that their parents are using good or bad language. We're not moralizing their parents like that. But this has also been immensely helpful with raising kids because when my kids have heard a swear word and then repeat it. We can explain it really easily in a morally neutral way by just saying, oh, hey, that is a grown up word. When you're an adult, you can choose whether you want to use it or not. It's a word that has a lot of meaning to it and can really hurt people if you use it the wrong way. So you need to be a grown up to make sure you're using it in a way that won't hurt people. Comment for a part two.